And will you um, start us off, Nick? I will. Thanks very much. Um, thanks for everybody for joining us this morning. So, um, okay, so the sort of beyond beyond four walls bit of this, I guess, I guess my input's going to be about looking more internally. So rather than looking out there beyond the four walls, actually having a bit of a dig around inside ourselves. Um, and i um, just going to share two two sort of things I'm going to throw out there really in the limited time that we've got just that might um, might appeal they might not um, it's opportunity for you to critique and chuck a few stones at the bits and bobs if you if you wish to um, but the idea being really about um, suggesting that you know well-being in leadership is a hugely important thing that we bring and that can uh, um, that can help our institutions and there are there are well there's lots of things we can do to build leadership well-being I'm just going to talk about maybe two of them and, and hopefully that will give um, some food for thought, some things to think about, and I'll set everyone a challenge at the end to go away with. So um, I'll just share my screen. Okay. Toby said a bit about me already, CEO, founding trustee of, of Wellbeing, Northeast Wellbeing. Um, member of the Independent Monitoring Board of the Prison Service and a program lead for MPQL. QEL and MPQ assessor and quality assurance. I don't normally list all the things that I do, but I do that this morning for a very clear reason, as it's uh, Mental Health Awareness Week, because that's one facet of me. You could also say this about me, um, that I'm an imposter syndrome specialist. Absolutely. Uh, if there was a cabinet office position for minister for struggling, it would be me. Uh, I collect bumps in the road along the way and have had many. I'm an aficionado of, of the wheels coming off, if I'm honest. I'm an absolute bore about sleep, its impact on our world and uh, on my world, actually. I <laughs> did talk to my family about that. Sleep bore. I've got a PhD in weight fluctuation. Um, and just being really honest, it's not, I'm not oversharing. I'm, I'm sharing this because I'm passionate about breaking down the stigma that sits around mental health. Uh, on some days, the very simple trio of talking more creating more and moving more which make a huge difference to my mental health sometimes on some days that can require my absolute strongest heart um so and i'm very proud of the 15 years of counseling that i've had and i i, I do I, I share this not as overshare but as an attempt to play my part in this very important week in raising awareness and saying you can be successful and you can have a great input in your working environment whilst struggling in the background and it's it's okay not to be okay sometimes i'm okay at the moment which is wonderful um so a few things that are buzzing around my head um come a bit like that uh, there's, there's two areas on here really i'm going to talk about preventers and relievers in a moment um go into a bit more detail about that and then i'm going to sort of on the far left hand side of the screen that bit about what it's like to be led by me because i'm i'm I really feel strongly that when we are more aware of how we land for people and how we, the wake we leave in leadership, when we've got raised levels of awareness around that, uh, it puts us in a better emotional place and, and our well-being goes up. N knowing, knowing about ourselves makes us more rounded, happier people and then in turn has an impact on the leadership and the success of our leadership. So um, if we have more time, I talk about loads of these little bits and bobs on the screen here, but at the moment, I'm just going to focus on those two things. So preventers and relievers. Well, um, so first thing uh, just to share with you, it's very simple. This is not rocket science at all, but um, those of you who've either got asthma or know people who've had asthma will know that um, the brown inhaler in the world of asthma is a, uh, a preventer. In other words, you take the brown inhaler um, daily over a period of time and it increases and improves your lung function thereby um, reducing the number of asthmatic episodes that you have so that's the reliever uh, the preventer <laughs> there we go that's the preventer you'll know or you might not know but let me tell you that the reliever so if I have an asthma attack um, I need my reliever which relieves it in the moment and um, I like to take that kind of thinking into my emotional world and say, what are the preventers and the relievers in my, in my life that allow me to, I guess, process, uh, process stress, stressful situations and, 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 and be, uh, uh, as, um, be as okay as I can be. And uh, I mean, there's no more to it than that, actually. It's just a, an invitation for people to consider uh, 
what are your relievers? What are your preventers? So um, the preventers in my world, time with my family. I wrote them out because I'm a good boy. Time, but time with my family, having exercise goals rather than actually the act of exercise. They're having a goal there is, a, is very much a preventer in the long term. Having a creative project. Um, it might be just tooling around on a guitar or drawing a picture or doing something in the garden, anything, but something creative, having interests, connecting with nature in the long term is certainly a preventer for me. Being involved in mindful stuff. Um, I ought to be an agent for, for Calm, the Calm app, because I use that a lot. And creating in my work calendar, my work schedule, specific blocks of time, which we call in our world strategic thinking time, STT. If I can map them out as a, as a preventer, they're more likely to lead over a period of time to me being in a better place across you know, a three month period. Okay, and what happens if it, if it becomes stressful in the meantime? So the sort of relievers, exercise, walking, talking to people, spending time with my, my gorgeous family, talking to my wife, uh, something I call the knight's move. So in chess, uh, the knight does two shot, two, two and one, like an L. So um, I practice the knight's move in my head where if the situation's there in front of me, I'll go back two steps and then to the side one step. Um, that's uh, something that helps me um, deal with situations in a more mannered, uh, sort of metered and, and better mannered way. Um, and listening to music in pockets, talking about music, those kind of things in the short term can be very, can be the relievers. So preventers, long term, relievers, short term. What are yours? And then just last thing on this, really. What are the relievers for me when the uh, best way I could describe it really this morning is when the gremlins are there, when I'm getting it wrong. And um, some of my short term relievers that I convince myself are helping me to process uh, the stresses and strains of the world are, are um, craft beer. Not a good one. Well, very nice, actually, but if used too much as a relieving mechanism, not so good. Toast. I probably eat more toast than most people in the Northeast. Um, so, um, you know, slamming through five or six um, slices of, of a white tiger loaf is a, is a, can be a, a gremlin type reliever for me. Make, might make me feel nice for two minutes, but make me feel fairly shabby an hour later. Takeaways, buying things I don't need. Um, and... Um, Sort of, sort, of, sort of the sharper end of it, withdrawing emotionally. I might think for the moment, actually, if I withdraw from the situation and don't sort of talk to anyone for a bit, um, that's going to help me sort of process stuff that's going on. Um, might work for a couple of minutes, but in the longer term, it doesn't. So I just thought I'd share that with you uh, and, and, and invite any comments later at the end of the session if you've got any on that. So that's preventers and relievers. And sort of put alongside that... Um, energies and, and just something about energies and this is about how um we land for people and what's kind of going on it's just a way of looking at what's going on inside our heads it's not my thinking i'm, I'm I've, I've read lots of books around this stuff as you can imagine in the stuff i'm the work that i'm doing and leadership plain and simple by steve radcliffe is absolutely blimmin marvelous so if you get a chance to get hold of a book i hate books that i can't understand i like easy reads uh, that's fantastic so that you'll find a lot more in his book about this but i met steve and i did some work with him um, a couple of years ago, and this just resonated massively with me, and I've been a bit of a been on a bit of a really to share it with people ever since. So, Drucker said um, that um, your foremost job as a leader is to take charge of your own energy, and then to help orchestrate the energy of those around you. And I absolutely, I mean, you might disagree with me, but I absolutely buy that. I think it, it speaks to me in volumes. I've got to think about my own energy and I've got to think about the energy of those around me. And it helps in lots of ways. It can help in terms of, you know, sometimes when we get dragged down some of the detail stuff and we obsess over bits. If I take a step back and think, what's my primary um, foremost job as a leader? If I think about it in those two areas, it can really help. So he said that. I agree with that. That's, I think that's pretty groovy stuff. And, um, you can think about your energies. And when well, I sort of talk to lots of people about this and that, you know, what, what's it, where are we going into sort of Hobbit land or Middle Earth or something? But actually, this is, this, is, this is good stuff. It's concrete stuff. There are four energies that we can broadly think about. And I'm sure they wouldn't surprise anyone in the, in the webinar. Intellectual energy, emotional energy, spirit energy, not spiritual energy, but spirit energy and physical energy. And, you know, no surprises. Intellectually, it's your thinking, it's your analysis, it's the energy of logic, rationality, it's behind criticism and finding fault often. Emotional energy, it's about human connection, 
relationships, belonging to a group. If you think about all of these energies in a hierarchy of need, the emotional energy bit at the bottom of the pyramid needs to be really nailed on because if you don't have relationships, everything else can go a bit hay, um, haywire, if you like. So emotional energy, spirit energy, particularly in leadership, is a hugely important part of our world. It's about that spirit of the future, the passion, being really in touch with what you care about, what's important to you. And it's a crucial energy for us as leaders because uh, it's through that spirit energy that we bring hope and optimism to uh, the people who work around us and the institutions that we're serving. Very, very important energy. Um, won't worry about that question for now or that. Physical energy, uh, no surprise, is about action, physical, physically doing things, getting things done. We sometimes know more about that energy when it's not present in our lives. So just four energies, and we could talk probably for about two or three hours about each one of those, but I'm sure they'll just sort of resonate with you. If you thought, you know, what, rather than just thinking, oh, I sometimes just define it through my physical energy. I feel tired out, I'm not feeling great. And actually, I, I like to consider, and I would encourage you as leaders and, and, and in your leadership life, but in your, in your um, home life as well, to think about where do you sit on those four energies and what, what levels are they at? And then that's the your energy bit of it. The energy of those around you is to consider to that of, of uh, for people who are around you too and it just gives you a narrative a way of speaking about it when what i noticed about this was when i first started talking about it with folk they did think oh what's he you know what, what's he on now what's he talking about now but actually it's very important stuff i think in terms of um creating an environment and enabling environment for the people you're working with a well-being environment to um check in on how how we feel across a range of areas rather than just maybe one so um, what do we do with those four energies? Well, what we can do with those four energies is put them into a matrix. And um, the matrix looks like this. You've got high energy and low energy in one um, direction. And then you've got at your worst and at your best in the other direction. And you end up with a, a nifty little matrix like that. And um, I guess that the, the challenge, if you like, or the, the, uh, what I would encourage you to do, and I, I do this a lot, I have to say, and I encourage people around me to do this a lot, is to, um, you might not use this exact way of doing it, but to think about where you sit on that matrix. When your energy's high and you're at your best, um, well, I don't buy into the sort of leader, leaders over there, real life over there world. In, in, my, in my world, leadership and Nick is the same thing. So this, is, this, is, this might be me at home. It might be me in the workplace. But high energy at my best, what, what am I like? Um, how do I land for people? High energy at my worst, what's, what's that like? What's that like for people to be around me? Low energy at my best, what can that feel like for people? And for me, of course, but for people around me and then low energy at my worst. Um, so, you know, again, I'm not going to overshare, but just to give it a bit of context with me, if you like, and just be honest about it. High energy at my best. Um, I know I can be good fun to work with and engaging and can take people with me um, and can create, a, 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 you know, a good sense of purpose around a priority. I know that about myself and that's high energy at my best, fizzy and, and fun. High energy at my worst, I can be quite critical um, and slightly Machiavellian and, 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 and a bit tricky in that respect. But I know that about myself and that's the important thing about this. Low energy at my best might be one of the better places for my colleagues to be around me where I'm a bit more, a um, bit softer, bit more tempered, bit more, um, I'm thinking more, I'm a bit a little, slightly slower in my approach. And then low energy at my worst is kind of that, some of that stuff I mentioned at the start of my, my little input here, you know, when I, where I withdraw emotionally from pretty much everyone around me. And, uh, and um, yeah, eat toast. So, um, so those are the four, four matrix, uh, the four areas of four sort of domains, domains in the matrix. Um, and just to sort of finish off, really, and then take a few questions, really, just my challenge to you is, is, is to, um, if, you, if you think there could, for you, be a link between thinking about your energies, think about how you land for people, thinking about your preventers and relievers, if you think there's a, a place for you to do that, make the time to, to consider it. Make the time to consider the energy of yourself and those around you. 
Um, and then I love meeting people, I love talking to people and, you know, th th sessions like this are great. There's not loads and loads and loads of us in, in, in these sessions. So a genuine offer, let me know how you do. I love, I love starting up conversations with people. Best way is through Twitter with me, really. DM me on Twitter at Kelsnick B. Let me know. Uh, similarly, if you just think we just talking a load of old twaddle, let me know or email me at Lingfield Education Trust if you're interested. So I'll just pause there, have a glug of tea um, and then I'll have a quick look in the chat room and see whether there's anything that you'd like to ask me about yeah so fa thanks very much nick um i think that's an uh, interesting one from rachel which is about just despite our best intentions and our preventers and relievers um there's uh, there are times when we kind of get it wrong we upset people um we provide the wrong energy in, in the wrong context and is what are your thoughts about the kind of um the the retrieval work um and um, what how yeah how, how do you approach that what when you're getting it wrong yeah 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 um, so i so I, I would bring into play um another set of another set of protocols if you like which then i tip into how can i um develop and encourage constructive unfiltered feedback in my life as a leader and actually in my life as a dad and a husband. Um, and uh, so we, you know, in our minds, uh, things like, you know, thinking about zone of uncomfortable debate. So if, if, if and if you're, um, if you take, if you, if you take a commitment to going into a zone of uncomfortable debate and welcoming feedback, and you meet that feedback with a growth mindset, um, mm -hmm. a sense of wanting to be adult to adult in it, and a decent feedback sort of sense of feedback, then um, I guess, well, two things really. Um, when you get it wrong, you want to know about it. But most importantly, when you're getting that feedback, it, 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 the feedback puts you in a place where you're able to do something with it rather than sort of withdrawing hurt from it and being sullen and moody about the whole thing. And I guess that, that links with the four matrix things in that respect. So, uh, and the energies, because if my energies are if I'm, if I'm thinking about my energies and where I am on them, mm -hmm. they're like faders going up, a, you know, um, then the likelihood for me to be able to respond to getting it wrong and, and addressing things moving forward is that much better. So that's why in leadership, it's a huge, my, my, you know, it's, a, it, it's a, um, to lead without thinking about these things, I think is not, we're not doing our jobs properly, but that's a, maybe a controversial view. To answer that question. Yeah, yeah, very much. Um, and I um, have something from, uh, from Neil, uh, which it is about um, the, the, the passion and, um, and fearlessness that is sometimes required of, uh, of leaders. Um, how, how does that sort of um, flavor your approach to leadership as understood in these, these four energies? What, fear? Fearlessness. Yes, you know, yeah, fear, so, um, fear, pa passion, energy, yes. I guess that, the, well, there's a direct, I think there's a direct link between how fearless, I mean, fearlessness is such a great state to be in. Not, not recklessness. Mm -hmm. Recklessness there, kind of fear of everything there, horrible, both horrible places. And actually, think about the quadrant, you know, you can be, I, well, I'm not reckless as a leader, but, you know, think, think back through life, high energy at my worst, maybe a bit reckless when I was younger, that kind of stuff. So, um, and uh, high energy, uh, low energy at my worst, I'm, I could be scared, that horrible mm -hmm. scared boy mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, what keeps you in a place of, yeah, so it's um, fear not, love not fear. <laughs> <laughs> love not fear that's my yeah. kind of thing so um you can you can i think you can you can create a bubble of fearless <clears throat> excuse me fearlessness around you more if you um are open to and you encourage people telling you what it's like to be around you I, i'm absolutely convinced of this and i'm at, and i also think there's a, a distinct link between the institution that you you, you as a leader and how, how much, um, I know we can't be introspective all day long, every day. I'm not saying that, and I'm not. I can be very operational and strategic, but there is a real place for that introspection and reflection as a leader. And I think if people don't carve that space out, they can become reckless or, or scared of everything. And I do think there's a link between the leader who 
undertakes reflection and the the impact that that has on a, on an institution that's undertaking reflection and you know in, in, in my world if you like it's about schools improving and getting to good places and the rest of it and i'm convinced there's a link schools that sustain and improve in a in a better way are often the schools where leaders are engaging in some of that work for want of a better word talk all morning about our sharp uh, no, no, it's kind of interesting stuff. And um, I just want to elaborate on a, a kind of a particular point, because I think that we have, um, it's w w our tendency as people, as feeling people, is to be in a place which, which is low conflict. I think that's a quite a universal thing. But that, but that place of um, low conflict can be a, um, a kind of false harmony. And that in, in that way, it's, it's a fearful response. It be, can become a fearful response to um, a challenging situation. Do, do you recognize that? No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so you could, you could just sort of banner headlines for our world sometimes. Too, too much artificial harmony. Um, not enough. Um, I mean, it's very nuanced and subtle, but finding, finding the, the spot where you are talking about the right things but you're not being uh, you're being constructive and you're not de you're not being destructive um and you might think you know some in the webinar might think well how's this relating to children and everything it, it absolutely relates to the young minds that we're serving i, I can tell you that i think that e the um because if we, we, I tend to think in terms of bubbles of enabling bubbles and if you can create a bubble in terms of leadership which if nothing else creates and affords the time for these kind of conversations to happen and to think through, um, then they, in turn, that will enable a group of teachers to feel like that. And what we want for the big bubble, the most important bubble in our world, which is around the children, is for adult around child to be full of love and not full of fear and recklessness. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and that's just so important. And it's, and it's particularly important, I think, post-COVID. It's, it's, it, we, we talk a lot about what's the recovery plan? What's the nuts and bolts? I don't think we talk enough about how we got to be and whether we've got to be a bit different. Yes, yeah. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Neil, for that uh, nice uh, kind of image to kind of uh, conclude this section, which is yeah. you don't, we don't want a bucket of still water. You're quite right. Yeah, um, gorgeous. You, yeah, it, but maybe continuing the metaphor without stretching it, you maybe want people in the current moving in the same direction.